Welcome back to the National Tennis Center. Kind of an eerie feeling watching Jimmy Connors back on stadium court tonight. You never know when Connors will be on stadium court for the last time. Tonight is matchup against Patrick McEnroe in the opening round. Here's Bill McAtee, Vitas Garolitis, and Barry McKay. Bruce, thank you very much. And a look at the Iron Man of the United States Open. That is Jimmy Connors and Vitas. A lot of people a year ago when he couldn't play because of the wrist injury thought maybe Jimmy Connors had already played his last U.S. Open. Uh, he battled back. He, he was out almost a year with that wrist injury. Well, we're going to get your... I'm sure you have a very pertinent comment to make about that question. <laughs> we'll get back to you on that in just a second. Uh, Barry, on the other side of the court, of course, Patrick McEnroe overshadowed pretty much all of these years by his brother. But he has improved some 458 places in the rankings in the last two and a half years. Bill, I think this is the biggest night in Patrick McEnroe's tennis career, frankly. Even though he got to the semifinals of the Australian, he has lived for so long in the shadow of his big brother, John. And, and yet this year, he's had a tremendous year in singles. He's really come of age as a singles player. And I think Patrick uh, would love nothing better than to uh, put on a great performance tonight in front of his old hometown folks here in New York and uh, certainly win this tennis match. And I think he's capable of winning it. Uh, a lot of people maybe question uh, the atmosphere out here against Patrick because, as everyone knows, when Jimmy Connors walks on his center court, Vetus, it is like magic here at Flushing Meadow. And uh, it, it's like you're playing against Jimmy and 20,000 other screaming New Yorkers. Well, Jimmy does have an ongoing love affair with the New York crowd. Uh, I've never met anyone that loves the game as much as Jimmy Connors. When he goes out, he amazes me. His practice sessions reminds me of the 18-year-old Connors that I played against many, many years ago. Jimmy Connors playing in his 21st U.S. Open, and Patrick McEnroe only his second. Last year's Open, Patrick lost in the second round to Christo Van Rinsburg. Barry mentioned earlier, semifinalists at the Australian Open, losing to Boris Becker in four sets. Made it to the third round of the French before losing there to Andre Agassi. And even at Wimbledon, where he lost in the second round, he ups upset 11th seed Emilio Sanchez in the first round. As the warm-up continues, day two of the 1990 US, 1991 U.S. Open, it's good to have all of you with us. Jimmy takes the sweater off. He won't need that tonight. Well, I think the other interesting thing about those stats we're looking at is that Connors has won this U.S. Open championship on three separate surfaces. He won in grass at Forest Hills in 74. He won on the slidey green hard true at the West Side Tennis Club. And then he's won over here on these decorative courts. So that is quite a record when you figure that he has won it on three definitely different surfaces. Getting ready to begin his 108th match here at the U.S. Open as you look at Patrick McEnroe tallying off. And, and Bill, as Vitas and I were talking before we got underway tonight, the atmosphere in this place is electric right now. This is one of those rare nights at the U.S. Open when everybody in town is here. It's the place to be and uh, it's just tremendous atmosphere. The only other way I could compare it to is being a Christian before you've been thrown out to the Lions <laughs> in front of a hungry crowd. They're expecting perfection out here. And Connors will serve to start the match. Fetus, don't you think the very first points of this match or the first few games are going to set the pace here tonight or set the tone? Well, I think the first couple games are going to be much more important for Patrick than for Jimmy. Jimmy's been in this position before. This is totally new to Patrick. This is really his showcase night in front of the New York crowd. That's long. 15 all. One of Patrick's big strengths, Bill, of course, the return of serve. He's been an excellent doubles player in his career, now has become a fine singles player.
that's a shot that's improved over the years in Jimmy's game. He's taken much more advantage of that lefty curve on his serve. 30-15. 40-15. 40 Jimmy scratches his head. He thought it was a little long. Dana Lacanto, the umpire in the chair from Alabama, one of the experienced touring umpires. 40-30. Deuce. Deuce. And a good example, Patrick's fine two-handed backhand on that return. That's a strong side. If Jimmy's going to att attack a wing tonight, he'll be playing much more at the Patrick's forehand side. On the line. And a winner from Patrick. Two-handed backhand, one of Patrick's best shots. And an early break opportunity as we look at it again for Patrick. A very clean back's approach to the backhand. Goes straight through and follows and right into the court. Second service now for Connors. Double. First double fault for Connors and an early break for Patrick McEnroe. We'll be back to the National Tennis Center in a moment. Back on the stadium court at the National Tennis Center, Patrick McEnroe up a break in the first set against Jimmy Connors. There are the McEnroe seniors, K. And John Sr., who have logged a few hours in this spectator area here through the years, obviously watching John and now very excited about watching Patrick. I mentioned to Kay McEnroe before the match, enjoy it, have fun. <laughs> she said, yeah, sure. <laughs> Love 15. Love 30. What does Patrick have to do? Mix it up? against Connors, he doesn't have an especially strong serve. Well, he's got to get a lot of first serves in, not letting Connors jump all over his second serve, and he's got to be aggressive. You can't expect Connors to come out here and miss balls tonight. He's got to get into the net, as he's done already in the first game, and just keep applying pressure on Jimmy. And I think he's also, Bill, got to attack the second serve of Connors as often as he can. Just intimidate Jimmy whenever he can on the second serve because that's what Patrick does well naturally as a good doubles player. He can hit the return and move in behind it. So he needs to do that as often as he can tonight. Now facing triple break point. One miles an hour. In my mind, his serve, and especially his first serve, Vetus, has improved in the last year, maybe as much as any part of his game. Patrick ranked number 35 in the world, was ranked 120 at the end of last year. Second serve, still facing two break points. Patrick looks uh, pretty much in command of his faculties. He is hanging in there. We had a chat with Mary Carrillo earlier this afternoon, and she was saying that these two have been practicing with each other quite a bit over the last 30 days, and Patrick uh, didn't want to tell anybody, but he's been doing pretty well in those practice sessions. They have never met in a tournament. This is the first time. And a roar 
roar goes up from this crowd. They're waiting to pull for their man. As Jimmy breaks right back, so we're all even back on serve. Balmy night in New York. Just joining us. Earlier, Martina Navratilova moved to the second round in a familiar call. Comes up from the probably 17,000 fans. <laughs> That's <was> great. <laughs> Jimmy, so very relaxed. Out here, the pressure is on Patrick McEnroe. Now, even if Jimmy is a little tight coming into this match, he's an expert in finding ways to loosen himself up, whether it's the banner with the crowd or pumping himself up by arguing with a line call. Patrick now good footwork and he has worked so hard on that part of his game follows through high on the forehand now quickly in the two-hander comes over it and right here gets back quickly on the overhead and knocks it off but as you were saying earlier too Vitas he has been really working on his footwork he covered that lob exceptionally well on the line And if there's a part of Packers' game that needs work, is his mobility. And that's what's really propelled him into the singles ranks this year. There's that Pat and Mac, uh, Connors backhand. Early preparation, straight through the ball. 30-15. Actually, both, both players have a very classic-looking game. all. When Jimmy misses that forehand, it's usually into the net. Through the years, Vitas, that's the shot that's sort of driven him crazy. Right, he very rarely will hit it long. Scores, excuse me, some scores from earlier today. In case you're just tun tuning in or getting home from work out on the West Coast. Cheetah Martinez, Yana Novotna, Zena Garrison, all through to the second round. In fact, all of the women's seeds have moved to the second round. Forty thirty now. Good second serve, kicking out to Patrick McEnroe's forehand. on the chair. And Jimmy Connors holds. You're on serve in the first set. Now, you set a precedent. Don't... First round action as we near the end of day two of the 1991 U.S. Open. And from above, stadium court and now inside. Jimmy Connors and Patrick McEnroe. Patrick taking a moment, letting fans settle. And now we're ready. again. 
Dan Alicanto has asked both players to replay this point. Jimmy loves to play to that kind of pattern, moving his opponent around and setting himself up for that one-headed back and there he chips low, always on his toes, fantastic footwork and now as soon as he sees the opening after that good back and he, he moves in for the kill, even though he hit a winner. Love 15. All. We should mention that during the changeover, Jimmy Connors told the chair umpire, Dana Lacanto, not to overrule because he had two chances to overrule in that previous game and didn't. So he said he didn't want to hear him overrule for the rest of the night. And we'd have to say he was pretty adamant about the way... Uh, <laughs> say that's fair. Yes. Tana. Fair assessment. I wonder how much of that is Jimmy getting himself charged up, getting pumped. Puts it away with the overhead. Patrick had that great comment when he got to the semifinals of the Australian. It was Edberg, Lendl, Becker, and McEnroe. And he went to the press conference and said, well, what did you guys expect? Isn't this what you thought was going to happen? <laughs> I'm sure older brother John is probably watching tonight. He plays the first match tomorrow morning, so he's no doubt not here. Well, he's a very articulate young man. He went to school in your neck of the woods. Stanford? on an NCAA championship team there. 40. First double fault of the evening for Patrick. But he never made it to, never won a singles title. Five doubles titles, including French Open, 1989. And we're at Deuce. A loose on that forehand. And Fetus, as I watch Patrick, I kind of call him a stand-up guy as we look at Jimmy Connors' unbelievable record there. Over $8 million in prize money. Last won that title back in Tel Aviv and an amazing 109 career tournament titles. Patrick's much more of a stand-up type player is what I was starting to say than, than Brother John. And not quite as flexible. He doesn't look as flexible. He's a little bit more meticulous in his preparation, whereas John seems to be improvising on almost every shot. He never hits the same shot twice, whereas Patrick helps you get into a groove sometimes. So uh, people pl enjoy playing against him because he hit, provides such a nice ball to hit against.
Patrick Hall serve as you look at Mayor David Dinkins of New York and we can thank his honor for the lack of airplane noise from runway 13 at LaGuardia and a USA programming note coming up September 8th four men on a hunting trip become the hunted in high desert kill Chuck Connors and Anthony Geary star in the USA world premiere movie Sunday September 8th on USA <laughs> 15 love. Third third. Peter, you played Jimmy a lot in your career. What made his left-handed serve tough for you? Well, he tried to exaggerate the hook. He never really served very hard. But you almost always knew whenever he was down a break point or needed a point badly, he'd spin it in drastically into your backhand. And his placement was always very good. 40 love. How, how has Jimmy's game changed over the years as you look at his serve again? There is good ball toss, gets up to it, and it really hooks around the ball. Good extension on that one, especially for a 39-year-old. 39 next week. But over the years, well, when I played against him many, many years ago, he was happy just to stay back on the baseline a lot more. Well, we'll have more about that in a moment. Jimmy serves a love game. We're on serve in the first set. The lights of the National Tennis Center on a balmy night here in Flushing Meadows, New York, about 10 miles outside of Manhattan. And on the stadium court, Patrick McEnroe and Jimmy Connors. On serve here in the first set. Jimmy Connors, wild card entrant, 38 years old. Patrick McEnroe, ranked 35 in the world and 25 years old. Bill, to get back to your question about what are some of the changes that I've seen in Jimmy's game over the years, I think his service has improved over the years. Before, he was happy just to play back from the baseline and win points from there. Now, I think he's always looking for that short ball to come in and try to close the points off a lot quicker. 30 luck. As, very, as you, you grow older and some of the younger guys can out-quick you, you obviously have to outthink them. Well, we heard from Pancho Segura earlier, too, and, and Segura was one of the all-time great tacticians in taking a short ball and sneaking in behind it. In fact, we all called him Sneaky because that's what he did so well. As soon as he'd see a ball floating, he would do that, and he instilled that in, in Jimmy at a fairly early age, and I think it's being used a lot more now by Connors. I know they were always complaining that Jimmy didn't use that play enough, but he certainly did pretty well from the baseline. <laughs> on the line. Patrick really nails this two-hander as the McEnroe crew looks on over there. Watch the way he sets up for this now. Connors really has a big opportunity here and right here Jimmy instead of kneeling it kind of took a little pace off the ball left the whole court open and Patrick hit his favorite shot cross court. I think he felt that Patrick was not really going to go play the shot and he just nonchalant it into the corner and instead Patrick says here take that and whack cross court. I'm surprised that he didn't nail that short ball. <laughs> 15 love. It seems that both players are just fencing right now. They're both trying to establish themselves in a match and as it goes on I think you'll see Jimmy getting a lot more aggressive.
It's nice to see a couple of rallies in this day and age of high-tech rackets and powered game. What do you think about the physical situation, Vetus? Any question at all that Connors can go five out here in this kind of humidity? I think it's a day-to-day -day thing. And there have been days where Jimmy in the last year or so where he doesn't wake up and feel really that good, tries to push himself, and I really can't quite do it. But he's got a lot of rest since team tennis, taking some time off, and he's really fresh, playing well last week at the Hamlet. Yeah, we should mention that Connors last week led in the third set, 4-3, with a service break against Stefan Edberg, and was right in the match. But that was best of three, and that wasn't the U.S. Open. You mentioned five setters, and you immediately think back to the French. And then Michael Chang. Forty loves second serve for Connors. And a love game for Jimmy Connors, still on serve in the first set. Bill McAtee, Barry McKay, Vitas Garolitis back at the U.S. Open. Once again, looking down at the lights of the National Tennis Center from the MetLife Blimp and a near capacity crowd here on Stadium Court for Jimmy Connors and Patrick McEnroe. You know, this center court is so different when you think of Wimbledon Vetus and the quiet surroundings, the tall, dark green and the big roof and everything. This place is just like madness compared to Wimbledon. Cement jungle here. Yeah, it is. Totally different. It's a rumble in the jungle. Goes wide. Timmy got out ahead of that one. Serve only 89 miles an hour. forehand again try to slice under it let's have another look now at the connor's forehand the racket's back now watch the racket come underneath the ball that one he swept over still in the point here comes the slice right here high back and then trying to swing under it. you could see it there the face just trying to slice under the ball and that is where connor's has had his problems through the years here's a look at the return of serve grip and that's, that grip is the reason why he has trouble getting way under it. He has it all the way over to the right side, so when the ball gets low, he has trouble getting all the way underneath it. Everybody used to say, slice low to Jimmy's forehand. So that's his weakness. <laughs> Most people would be very happy to have that forehand. screeching going on during the match and that's Jimmy's feet shuffling the whole time he never commits himself too early always perfect footwork sets up just right and then he'll plant and hit the ball just as it bounces it's another little idiosyncrasy of Connors he taps those toes as he walks forward he right. scuffs the toe number one and 109 miles an hour for Patrick. Well, the one Patrick, or uh, say the one McEnroe family member that's obviously not there, a guy named John, who's playing tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. So he's probably already tucked away and watching yeah. baby brother Patrick.
that's another element of the game that you don't see as much, Barry, anymore, is that really deep hitting. Look at the footwork. Instead of taking one big step, he'll always take a couple little ones and set himself up just right. He's very meticulous about how he prepares for a shot. He moves right in, always on the toes, never flat-footed. And then when he really wants to put his whole weight into it, he jumps into the ball, lunges into it. But always with a low center of gravity. 40-30. So we go to four all. As Patrick and Jimmy both take some time to towel off on a muggy night, no wind. Some more women scores. Pam Schreiber, winner in straight sets. Again, the, Con the Connors forehand letting him down just a bit now here. These are crucial points. <laughs> One of the few times Jimmy's come in and and he goes for the lob right away, Beatus. Is that a good play just to make sure that he knows he can't stick his nose over that net? Well, he sort of noticed that uh, not to get too close to the net because he will keep you honest with the lob. McEnroe. This by far the best shot we've seen all night from either player. Watch Patrick on this shot now. He plays some great defense here, scrambles over, and on the full run, just inside that sideline. And he used his wrist a little at the very end of that shot. And I was about to say what a great angle by Jimmy, but Patrick answered it with a screaming forehand. There's that improved mobility by Patrick McEnroe. If Jimmy's quick to answer, you can do it, I can do it better. Good reflex volley there by Connors. He got jammed. Patrick really concentrating. As you said, Bill, it is muggy out there. These guys go into the towel now after almost every point. 30 all. by the linesman. Let's take another look at it. I think it was clearly long. Jimmy made a good stab at it. Absolutely. Yeah. Good four to five inches. From another angle here, Patrick on the full run, but that ball definitely drops over the baseline. And Jimmy fights off a break point. Back to Deuce. Beatus, I think Connors, in the history of tennis, may be one of the two best 30-40 players on his own serve. The other, Pancho Gonzalez, who served 85% first serves in at this point. The amazing thing is that Jimmy does it from the baseline, generally, where Pancho used to serve up the big serve. Another break opportunity for Patrick. And 
McEnroe with the break. And when we come back, he'll be serving for the first set against Jimmy Connors. Back at the National Tennis Center, Patrick McEnroe serving now for the first set. Those natives were restless out there. I'm <laughs> telling you, I walked by that gate a couple hours ago and they were all over the place out there. Well, I didn't have to wait for 4.30. <laughs> Hundred and seven. Not bad. Net. Oh. Saw Richard Krychek earlier. Well, everything Burning looks that like baby. slow motion. Burning yeah, up yeah, him. The radar gun. a little bit more aggressive than Jimmy right now. Every short opportunity, he hits a really good approach shot firm and gets into the net. Another look here as Connor scrambles, tries to get that lob as high as possible. This one is going to go wide, but... And triple set point now for Patrick McEnroe. One adjustment I see in Patrick's game for tonight's match is that he's trying to put a little extra stick on his first serve. Generally, his strategy is to get the first serve into play and win the point with his ground strokes. But tonight he feels that against Jimmy, who returns serve so well, he's got to put a little extra zip and try to put Jimmy off guard right off the bat. Still two break points for McEnroe. Jimmy trying to climb back. One more to go. This is by far the biggest point of the set right here for Patrick and Connors. But you can see Jimmy now giving him a little bit of extra time. A couple feet behind the baseline. That was Packet and McEnroe's best service in this set, 111 miles an hour, and Jimmy answers it with his best return. You said it earlier, Barry, Jimmy plays the big points better than maybe anyone that's ever played the game. Now Patrick steps back. Jimmy clinches the fist, goes to the towel. Now with an opportunity to break back. And he moved him closer to the baseline that time. And he's getting himself pumped up.
Catches the tape, the court was open. If that ball goes over, it's a winner for sure. We're at the National Tennis Center, first round action from the 1991 U.S. Open. Jimmy Connors and Patrick McEnroe. We are on surf. Welcome those of you just joining us. Jimmy Connors facing three set points, brought it back to Deuce, then had a break to get even in the set, and it was McEnroe's turn to fight back. Again, one of Patrick's best serves out wide. Connors with that great two-handed stretch. Almost hits the winner. Cross court. Watch this return now. This ball really draws Connors out. He lunges for it, uses the pace, blocks it, and on the full run, he almost gets this ball back in play. Who said he slowed down? Not I. He looks awful quick. Set point number four. And the first set goes to McEnroe, 6-4. Well, you know, when you analyze these two guys' games, they basically play pretty much alike. They've got the good two-hander, they've got a good return of serve, love to keep the ball in play. Very similar styles facing each other out here tonight. Love 15. And at the beginning of the match, we felt that Patrick McEnroe might start feeling the butterflies feel a little bit shaky, but he hasn't been affected at all by the crowd or by Jimmy. better than that point. Connors shoveling the ball back. Watch That's a Connors. new shot in his repertoire. <laughs> I don't think he's ever tried that, that shot before. One he probably hopes not to use again. <laughs> it's called the frying pan. <laughs> and then he made a great recovery with the backhand. Patrick hit it down low to his backhand. Great exchange. And then Jimmy just nets that backhand. Out too wide. Love 30 now. You're right, Barry. You don't see much better than that. They did it all on that point. There's the Connors grip on the serve now. He's pretty far around towards the forehand side. Oh. Third double fault for Connors. He must have heard you talking about a service grip. <laughs> like the kiss of death. I <laughs> say something about a good point and nothing. Triple break point now for McEnroe. Love seeing that long follow through. He keeps the ball in his racket for such a long time. That's where he gets all that depth. Keeps the ball very close to his opponent's baseline all the time. I think that two-hander of Connors has passed a few players. 
over the last 15 years. That's gone by some real good tennis players. If Connor staves off two break points. Patrick still has one left. It's a big game here. First game of the second set, Bill. He could break early. Big psychological advantage. Patrick there, he just waited for Jimmy to make his move and then lifted it up. Patrick McEnroe starts the second set with a break. Of course, the crowd of 20,000 had to wait a while to get in because the afternoon session ran long. And among those waiting outside, USA's Michael Barkham. Just outside the main gate, waiting for the second session to begin. It's now uh, quarter to seven, second session not scheduled to start till 7.30. Some of these people waiting for up to two hours. We want to know why. You've been out here since 5 o'clock. Why? Why? Good excuse to get out of work early. Well, we're trying to find the people that have our tickets. <laughs> What's the procedure for day session ending, night session beginning? How do you do it? We'll try and get the night crowd into the plaza as soon as possible so that they're free to use the facilities and the restaurants, etc. Um, we make that determination based on what kind of a, how big the crowd is outside the gate, how big the crowd is inside the stadium, and actually the time of day it is. You've been here since when? Since when? I've been here since 4.30. Why? Well, Jimmy Connors is playing tonight. My friend Joe got tickets, and I couldn't pass this up for anything. Uh, at what point do you think you go to the cushions here? Uh, what point? Yeah. Mm, maybe in about another 20 minutes or so. You sit right down and relax. Right here. Why not? And this is the moment we've all been waiting for. Walking through the gates. Let's hear it, folks. Yeah! Yeah, yeah we're in! Right. Let's watch Connors! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. He was really happy to be in. <laughs> that was tremendous. <laughs> Seriously, I walked by out there about an hour and a half ago, and those natives were restless. I didn't see Mike, though. <laughs> Where was he? Mike was stirring him up. Now rabble rousing. When are you going to go to the cushions? <laughs> I've never seen a happier fan that was heading into the grounds. <laughs> I'm telling you what, that's oh not easy to do. You got a ticket for the night session. You say, what do you mean I can't go in there? That's love and tennis, being there from 4.30, waiting for the night session. That was terrific. Jimmy Connors generates that kind of interest here at the U.S. Open. Right now, Jimmy is down a set and a break to Patrick McEnroe. Take a look at the numbers from the first set. It's really interesting. I didn't think Connors was serving that well, but that's a much better looking serve than Patrick's in that first set. Everything else pretty even. Now that's winners. Back in row with a two to one edge. Jimmy's always had a very high percentage of first serves in, but he doesn't really hurt you with the first serve. Love 30, let's take another look at it. The winner from Connor. Patrick McEnroe hits a very good approach on it. Even though Jimmy got a bad bounce, he adjusted by bending his knees, getting lower to the ground, and just blocked the ball straight up the line. 
Third ace of the match for McEnroe. That's been the difference between the two serves. Patrick has taken a few more chances on that first serve, going for a couple of aces. Classic looking service grip. A little loose here, Venus, in the second game. And very important game here for Patrick. Some of the scores from this afternoon. Number one seed, Boris Becker. Stefan Edberg dropping a set. Michael Steek in straight sets. Jim Courier in straight sets. Of course, the five-setter, Von Lendl, facing two match points. Coming back to beat Richard Krychek. Jimmy couldn't quite get there. You know, it's interesting about those scores. The one guy we haven't heard much about at all since we arrived here, Michael Stieck. He's only the Wimbledon champion. And he looked awfully strong up in the dressing room. Uh, there's Jimmy lunging for that shot. Couldn't quite get to it. What does that mean? I <laughs> that he couldn't get to the ball. Oh, he looked, looked awfully the strong in the dressing room. Well, I didn't realize how big Michael Stieck was. Connor's forehand letting him down badly. And we're back to Deuce. And it is a warm night here in New York. David Wheaton in four sets. Elio Sanchez also through to the second round. Stieke is a big kid. Well, I meant that two years ago I saw him win at Memphis. And he just seemed like a skinny young kid. And this year, he's a real developed young man. Oh. Oh. That is an unbelievable forehand on the run from Connors. But the court opens up for Patrick. The, one of Jimmy's real strengths is he does not give up from point to point. He tries just as hard the first point, last point. Patrick on his toes really has improved his mobility. He's moving around the court so beautifully today. On, on his toes, and there was the point. Connors down. Looks like he slipped. So McEnroe holds off a couple of break points as you look again at Jimmy. They're right there. His left foot just kind of went out from under him. And you know, the other area I think Patrick has really improved, Vetus, is concentration. We saw Patrick play John in the finals there in Chicago, and John will tell you that match was a lot closer than the scores indicated. It was a three-setter. John beat him, but it, it was some real good tennis, and I think that day he improved his game quite a bit. His concentration is tremendous. Patrick won the first set of that match. 3-6, and then 6-2, 6-4, Brother John. Love 15. This is a must game for Connors. He's down a break. He needs to hold serve here. He seems to be favoring his leg a little bit after yeah. that jolt he gave to it before. He loves to tap Ooh. those toes. Yeah. Is that one little heel syncrasy that he's had over the years? <laughs> Connors now looks like he may have stretched something. Yeah, he's limping a little bit right now. No question about it. Left leg. Fifteen all. <laughs> and Jimmy stumbled a little bit coming to the net and then pulled up. He is definitely After the ball was called out. Sorry, Bill. No, that's right, Bill. He, he's definitely favoring that left side now. 
take another look at Vetus and Jimmy. He got down, he hit a pretty good shot there, and seems to be afraid to put pressure on his left knee. And there he's, he's really yeah. favoring it. Ooh. Fifteen second serve. Nice overhead. Forty fifteen now. Patrick walks up and has a bit of a look at that service call. He won the point anyway. That's about all you'll see from Patrick. A little contrast to the emotional <laughs> outside of Patrick McEnroe and his I was brother John. Any comments there? <laughs> no, I think that's fairly obvious. <laughs> Despite the limp. Game Connors. The National Tennis Center on a warm night. Just outside of Manhattan. And during the changeover, Jimmy Connors walked out with a slight limp. Down a service break in the second set and the fourth ace from McEnroe. Actually, Connors, even though lately has had some injuries, Vitas, through his career, he's been a pretty durable type of player. That's out. And, and Barry, if he has had injuries in the past, he certainly wouldn't let anybody know about it. You look at the percentages the players up there. Connors right up there, close to Lindell. Not, not a bad group. 15 all. Long. Much better on that point. It's one of the best points Connors has played so far tonight. He picked just the right opportunity to get in behind it. Now watch it here because he's quick to get in. Lunges for a forehand volley. Now watch the footwork here. Anticipates perfectly and cuts off the forehand volley. Although right there it looked like he still might be having just a bit of pain. Vitas, at this point, is he going to try and make the points shorter, maybe cut down the total time of each point? Well, during the changeover, he switched rackets, and I think he went to a little bit looser racket to get a little bit more spring. I think he's going to try to start speeding up his ground strokes, shorten the points. 15-30. Definitely getting more pace into those two. A lot of times he'll fiddle with the tensions of his rackets. There he moves in. There's a good pass and then he starts favoring that knee again. Yeah. And 
double break point for Connors. Didn't you find it very difficult to place somebody when you see an injury oh, yeah. and you inadvertently start to change your strategy? You try to move him around a little bit more because you think he's not running just as well. That's something you have to avoid. Exactly. Chang with those cramps in the French Open. Lendl's looking over there. He can hardly walk. Chang en ends up winning the match. And that match, instead of Lendl really hitting out on the, on the ball, he just tried to move Chang around. And he lost that aggressive play and ended up losing the match. Finals of the U.S. Open right here. Ashley Cooper and Mal Anderson. Anderson sprains his ankle. It was really tricky. And Ashley Cooper did. Double fault. Second double fault for McEnroe. And Connors even things up here in the second set. Actually, well, Jimmy doesn't look that concerned, at least right there he didn't. And he, he was moving much better during that game. Well, he almost seems to be hitting the ball a heck of a lot better after the injury. <laughs> out. Take a look at Patrick here, Vitas. Well, Patrick is now trying to focus back on the way he was playing in the first set. Really trying to move Jimmy around. Tracks back. Making sure that the overhead is out. Very nice. 15 all. Jimmy loves to hit that backhand a lot of the times behind you. He just hold because of that early preparation, he can wait that extra fraction, watch you commit, and then hit behind you into the open court. point of the match and I'll tell you what two players can't hit the ball much cleaner than that for that that long a period of time if you want to write a textbook on how to hit it pure beautiful shots that was it right there corner to corner both jockeying for position the Connors just finally said hey <laughs> this is too much <laughs> and he went for the knockout punch and, and missed wildly 15.30. See Patrick trying desperately to stay dry out here in this humidity. Keep running me like that, I'm not going to play anymore. I'm going to go home. I doubt that. Yeah, Patrick, you got some nerve running me around like that. <laughs> you can't. Where's your respect? <laughs> <laughs> Throw respect out the door here in New York. 
13 years, the difference in age. Patrick was eight years old when Connors won that first U.S. Open back in 1974. 40-30, and now Patrick takes a stroll toward the net, and you mentioned a young Patrick McEnroe. With the there tongue out. I've seen John stick his tongue out. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Must be an inherent tr family trait. And that was the year Jimmy <laughs> Connors won his first United States Open. Oh. oh My, how time flies. Well, Vetus, I remember in 1979 when you and John came to San Francisco to play Davis Cup, John said, I'm going to bring my little brother along. Can he play a few points and just put a little exhibition on? He was 14 years old. Hit the ball pretty well in those days. Good old days, Barry. done very well forging his own style, Barry. It would have been so easy to try and copy some of John's characteristics, but he wouldn't have become Patrick McEnroe, his own singles player. Can you imagine it was tough growing up in John's shadow? They Definitely. Two very different individuals. Just when you used to see a lot of those Bjorn Boer clones. They dressed the same, they had the same strokes. Unfortunately, they could hit two balls in a row like that. <laughs> Great angle on that passing shot. Deuce again. They have been playing for an hour and 13 minutes. It's been at a very good cliff indeed. <laughs> These guys have used every part of the court so far. That's the first time we've seen Connor serve in volley. Got in quick behind that serve. And I got to think that Jimmy is now trying to make these points as quick as possible. Well, to stay in the match, he's got to keep the points a lot shorter and try to keep Patrick a little bit off balance. Break opportunity for Patrick. Great example where Jimmy goes on his serve during a big point. Loves to pull you out wide. Would you say he does that nine out of ten times? Nine out of ten times, you know where it's going. They're right up that line, way out to Patrick McEnroe's backhand, and that opens up the whole court for him for that two-handed backhand shot. Because it's very difficult for you to hook it back to Jimmy's forehand side. And you know he's much more confident on the backhand. You're looking down there from the MetLife blimp into the stadium court Patrick McEnroe and Jimmy Connors as we near the end of day two of the US Open at Deuce in the second set Once again, Jimmy goes through the towel. 25 seconds now in between points. These guys are using up most of those 25 seconds between each point.
And there's a good shot of Jimmy coming in. He gets in close to the net. And now this is that famous sky hook a la Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And now let's get an update from the grandstand court. Here's Lee Shiras. Thank you, Bill. Over on grandstand, the 10th seed, Carl Novacek against the American Scott Davis. It ended with Novacek oh. taking command in the last two sets. Scott Davis never really able to get his game together, and Carl Novacek has broken his jinx. He had not won a match at the U.S. Open in his past three attempts. We'll be back with more action with Connors and McEnroe after this. As Jimmy Connors gives the full capacity crowd here a deja vu of champion days gone by, let's give you a preview of the matches coming up tomorrow on day three here on USA. First up on the stadium court, John McEnroe, that's Patrick McEnroe's older brother, a twist to an old phrase, is going to be taking on Martin Larendau. At the same time, over in the grandstand court, Monica Sellis will be playing Emanuela Zardo. Capriati, that's Jennifer, the teenager from Florida, is going to be second up on the stadium court, and she'll be followed by Stefan Edberg in his second match. He'll be playing Jeff Durango. And over on the grandstand, when Sellis gets through with her match, Michael Chang and Todd Whitson will get on the court, followed by Yvonne Lendl and Patrick Cunin. But right now, Connors has lost the first set to Patrick McEnroe, and they're battling it out in the second. Let's get back up to Bill McAtee and the action up there. Bill? Thank you very much, Diana. Patrick McEnroe serving, 3-2 in the second, 40-15, packed house, just a few empty seats near the top, but a great crowd. Well, Barry, a lot of people had high anticipation for this match, and I don't think they've been disappointed so far. We've seen a great display of ground strokes from both players. No question about it, Peter. They have hit the ball, what I would like to say, cleanly. I mean, you can really hear it popping off the center of those strings out there. Deuce. Patrick a little mad at himself there. Overhit the ball. Had the open court. Instead of stroking it a little bit, he overhit. That time, Jimmy, good second effort. Gets the shot. Patrick hit that ball long. Let Jimmy off the hook. Ace number six. Advantage McEnroe. So we're all tied at three. Looking back, Vetus, at the draw, what are the odds of this kind of matchup in the first round? Well, I was there when they were pulling the draw out. Weller Evans, the uh, director of the ATP, <laughs> I stood next to him. I said, give the New York guys a break. Let's spread them out all over the draw. And <laughs> the names he pulls out, Connors versus and Patrick McEnroe. <laughs> 15 love. What, I wonder what was going through Patrick's mind playing, playing a man who had had so many great matches with his older brother. And finally, the spotlight is on him on the stadium court. Well, I talked earlier to his coach Carlos Goffey, and he said that Patrick was a little bit nervous. He made sure that he was would stay home yesterday and not come out to the open and have everybody talking about the match. But he's proven everybody wrong. He looks calm as a cucumber out there. I think since he got to the semifinals of the Australian Bill, he has come of age. He, he knows that he, he's up there with the top guys and can play with them and beat them. Speaking of draws, you know, some of the tournaments in the old days, you'd start the draw, you get about 15 names out of the hat, and he'd look at the draw and say, this doesn't look too good. Let's start over again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
from Sarasota. They would never do that in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Well, we played on the Bill Reardon's tour. Jimmy Connors would get the first pick on this side of the draw, Nastasi. Then he'd come down to sitting there and myself on the leftovers. <laughs> well, those were really the good, the good old days. Dirty love. Once again, a look down from above, from the MetLife blimp, and you see full stadium, and lit above the blimp. And nice night for flying, guys, up there. really dropping off now 72 miles per hour we are in the seventh game which many people feel is a very critical game in any set fourth double fall seems like Jimmy's shaking off what injury he had to his knee he may have just jammed it, and it's taken him a couple games to loosen up a bit. in the second set. We'll be back. John Lloyd, among those watching with interest here at the stadium court. Jimmy was on the same team with John Lloyd this summer, playing in Los Angeles for the Los Angeles Strings Team Tennis. And by the way, Jimmy was voted Rookie of the Year in Team Tennis this year. And that was listed as that impressive. Right? Another record? <laughs> Awards. 88-year-old Rookie of the Year. Thirty love. with three big serves here. This may be the best game he's served this set, for sure. Changing the pace up. Not a lot of speed, but good change up. <laughs> Winner in a love game from Patrick McEnroe. We're back at four all. Talk about Grand Slam titles. Patrick won the French Open doubles with Jim Grab back in 1989. He really didn't get a lot of recognition for that. That's a big title. No, that was just about the time when he realized that he had to start working on his mobility. Went out with him a couple times on the court, and he is one of the hardest working kids out there. Loves to do those two-on-one hop and drills. Does a lot of off-court training, running, weight work on his legs. Keith Matt Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. Yeah, one of our boys. Out with a bad back. They 
Patrick does not look intimidated. He looks very much in control. Not at all, Bill. There is, once again, he gets around it. Jimmy hits what seems to be a really good shot. Almost a put away, and Patrick gets around and just snaps it away for a winner. And now, triple break point for Patrick McEnroe. There it was, Vitas, that same serve you talked about. The one out wide when he gets down. Yep. You heard Patrick say, yep, as the ball sailed by a winner from Connors. <laughs> McEnroe still with two break points. Playing for an hour and a half, and you look at the face of Jimmy Connors. I can tell you, when you hit and an approach shot and a guy goes for a passing shot, you know he's hit it. There's no question you've lost the point. Patrick knew it. Looked to me like he rushed that one a little bit. Changed his mind and came under the ball instead of hitting through it on that two-hander. So two break points slip away here. Patrick says if he could just get this game, get a two-set to love lead under his belt, that he'd really have Jimmy against the ropes. And he just rushed that a bit. A three of nine on both points. Oh, and a double fault. Fifth double fault for Connors. And the break goes to McEnroe. Welcome back to the National Tennis Center. Patrick McEnroe serving for the set. To take a two sets to none lead. There's the entire McEnroe crew down there. John Sr., Kay, and Tatum to the left out of sight. There she is. Second from the left, from the far left. And we were speculating that John is at least at home getting ready to play tomorrow morning. He's up early. Otherwise, I'm sure he'd be here watching Patrick, one of his biggest fans. Great forehand. Good shot of that footwork. Gets the racket back. Good early preparation. And he really stayed with the ball. Carried it all the way through straight up the line. Great depth. And Barry, what I haven't seen Jimmy do too much of today is jump on the second serve a little bit more. Yeah. He usually loves to do that. He loves to do that against opponents to kind of get them a little bit scared about serving their games up. Well, the one thing he hasn't been able to do much, Beatus, is kind of slip in behind any floating balls. Patrick has hit the ball very solid, kept it low, and kept it very deep so far. Patrick goes for the old choke sign around the wow. net. I don't think that was as much a choke as Patrick being distracted by Connor's movement in the back of the court. He saw Jimmy move all of a sudden. He did go grab his neck. A 
Don't feel bad, Patrick. The best of them have choked. A couple of big points here now for Connors. Jimmy not doing real well on break, off, break point opportunities there. Five all in the second set. There's something about the air here in Flushing Meadows. It, it does not allow you to serve out a nice, easy match. There's always that up and down. You think you have a guy against the ropes, he comes back. from the baseline there. And Patrick McEnroe really hits that backhand so cleanly. Great preparation. And he gets down really nicely to the forehand. Good knee bend straight through the ball. Good concentration too. You can see it in his eyes there. He is really working hard right now. I feel like getting you charged up when you lose your serve when you're serving for the second set like that. Love 30. But, you know, Barry, what really impresses me is Patrick is taking his time, not getting rushed, has his composure, like he's been here plenty of times before, yeah. and in fact, this is only his second U.S. Open. It's a real good point, Bill. He, it looks like he's a veteran out there playing against Connors tonight. His, his demeanor is real smooth. He hasn't gotten upset at all, and he has concentrated extremely well against one of the best competitors in the game. Well, I think that's a, a lot of that comes from his experiences in doubles. Did play in center court, finals of the French. So he's had some Grand Slam experience. <laughs> Roan from the crowd and double break point. McEnroe and another chance to serve for the match at 6-5. Crowd exhorting Connors. One down. Once again, Jimmy claws his way back to Deuce. And once again, Jimmy goes to his bread and butter, Barry. Wide lefty serve out to Patrick McEnroe's backhand. Opens up the whole court. Great shot. Out wide. Look at how much court he has open. And then he'll just slide that forehand down the line. And Patrick will net it. There's so much court that Patrick has to cover from one side to the other.
official championships of the United States, the U.S. Open. And here on the stadium court, Patrick McEnroe serving to send the second set to a tiebreak. Players waiting for the crowd to settle down. It's always a nice feeling to open up with that first point when a big game appears like it is right now. Get you off to a nice little start there on your own serve. Listen to the crowd. How you like that, Venus? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I liked it. It was pretty good. <laughs> Not bad, Jimbo. He gets down to that shot in here. He lunges for that back end volley. Gets down like a 16-year-old to that volley. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's talking to you, Venus. You guys got your private network going here. <laughs> I didn't know Jimmy bought USA Network. 30 15, it's basic service, Venus. Everybody gets it. Barry, you didn't mention us. <laughs> Because early, remember he said to Lakanto, do not overrule. <laughs> and here's a chance for him to overrule. <laughs> Ace number eight. And Connors is upset. Let's listen now. Jimmy's going to have a few words here. Dana Lacanto, the man in the chair. How can you miss them all, I think is the translation. Dana Lacanto from Gadsden, Alabama. to the tiebreaker. Connors two and two and tiebreakers ten and four for McEnroe. Jimmy's starting to limp just a touch once again. Yeah. 
Doesn't it always seem when it gets tight in the match that everybody gets tight all together? The yeah. linesmen, the players, the umpires. Even at one. No one is exempt from nerves at the U.S. Open. Big serve from McEnroe. 2-1. Perplexed and very concerned parents of Patrick there. John Sr. Oh, he's right, K. They have been through so many tense moments here at this stadium. that has worked so well for Patrick tonight, the lob. He has caught Jimmy three or four times on crucial points right up that line, just lifting the ball over Connors, and it worked again that time. And you mentioned the similarities in their backhands, Barry. He holds the ball really well. Jimmy anticipated a cross-court dink off the backhand that way. Even though the lob wasn't that good, he won the point. Jimmy gets one of them back. Still down 3-2. Came up with a big serve, Barry, when he needed it there. We want to remind our viewers, especially those of you on the East Coast, we'll be staying with this match as long as we can. Probably, for those of you on the East Coast, another 25 minutes the rest of the country will be here probably till the conclusion of the match. Jimmy played the point perfectly, tried to put the Pressure back on Patrick McEnroe. Shot of Patrick getting to the ball. Jimmy was at the net, missed that easy volley. And Patrick, is, he dodged the bullet there. He's happy. And he kept the ball real low on a very, very tough forehand up the line. And like you said, Vetus, Connors was sitting on that shot. It was, it was low, but it, that was a gimme for Jimmy at the whole court to hit into. Looking down from the MetLife blimp. 4-2 McEnroe, second set tiebreaker. McEnroe won the first set, 6-4. I wanted to jump all over that one. Just rushed it. Jimmy knows two points away from being down two sets to none. And you can see he came over the ball, but it was a little late. Post shot by Jimmy Connors. He leaned into it, didn't he? But he just really put his weight behind that shot. And he really tightened up on the wrist, wanted to make sure that he hit it really firm and deep.
You can't have much more pressure on the forehand than Connor's head right here. A deep shot, and he just follows through perfectly. If he ever needed it, it was right then. Five four now. Not like the toss. He'll start again. Jimmy Connors faces double set point. Jimmy just barely got his racket on it, anticipated where Patrick was going to hit it, and Patrick was not going to make the same mistake twice. He made sure that he put that one away. And that little short ball was not that easy a shot for Patrick right there. Check that set point, Patrick. And the second set goes to Patrick McEnroe in the tie break. And then CBS will be picking up this match live. However, for our viewers on the West Coast, we will be staying with this match. Now, an interesting note about tomorrow night's schedule. Michael Steak was scheduled to play his second round match against Jimmy Brown. However, developments involving the health of Jimmy Brown have necessitated a change. Following Brown's first round five set win over Alberto Mancini, Brown suffered from severe dehydration. Upon the advice of doctors, he does not feel he can be competitive tomorrow. The tournament referee, Tom Barnes, asks Brown to rest tonight and wait until tomorrow to see if perhaps Brown's physical state improves. But in order to ensure the continuity of Wednesday night's program, referee Barnes has moved the grandstand match of Malavia, Washington and Omar Camparese to the second match in the stadium court and has scheduled the Jimmy Brown-Michael Shtick match for the grandstand starting at 8.30 p.m. Now, if Brown does default that match, Steak will get a walkover into the third round, and he will also get an extra day of rest. We'll be returning to the match between McEnroe and Connors on Stadium Court in just a moment as we continue our primetime coverage on USA. Back at the USTA National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadows, New York, and on Stadium Court, Patrick McEnroe is up two sets to none against Jimmy Connors. They are at deuce. First game of the third set. opportunity for Connors and what does Jimmy have to do now down two sets to none well I don't think Jimmy's going to change his game very much it's only been a matter of points here and there in several of the games uh, I think he may show a little bit more variety and get to the net a little bit quicker but he's just going to keep plugging away and fighting whereas Patrick can't get too complacent with a two sets of love lead he's also starting to hit Jimmy is a good approach shots very solid he does not look that tired believe it or not after all the effort that he's expended I think he ought to go in a little bit more Bill Back to Deuce. Grimace from Jimmy as he lets it get away. Patrick has just changed shirts. He's looking very fresh at this point in the match. Another break opportunity for Connors. As soon as I say he looks fresh, he hits a backhand. Looks like he was about as tired as he could be on that shot. That's 
to be careful not to get emotionally down after that exciting tiebreak finish in the second set. Look at Patrick, and he looks very determined once again from the MetLife Limp Stadium Court. Just wide. Vantage McEnroe. Good look at what Connors is, has done when he's been two sets to love down. Saw that match against Turnforce. Great match at Wimbledon. Patrick McEnroe holds. into the third set of this opening round match Jimmy Connors and Patrick McEnroe Love Venus, at this point, it looks to me like Patrick is content to keep the ball in play. I think he feels he's got Connors where he wants him now. He's just trying to keep that ball in play, let Jimmy make the errors. And at the same time, he's moving Jimmy around quite a bit, so he feels that maybe he could wear him down from a stamina point of view. Patrick gets that opening down the line. He just seems to haul off and go for it. I think that's his best winning shot is that forehand down the line. Watch it here again because Patrick lines this ball up now. He sees his opening and then just goes for it. But he sets his feet up real nicely. Yeah. A lot of times you see players miss that shot. They see the hole up in court but don't move their feet because they think it's such an easy shot. Can't take any shot for granted. just a little bit frustrated. He's throwing the kitchen sink at Patrick, and Patrick seems to have an answer for everything. Jimmy's not playing badly. I mean, we've seen some great tennis today. Great exchanges between the two players, great jockeying for position around the court. And he's also competed well, which is obviously what he does the best for you. I mean, he has been down, he's come back. Like you say, Patrick's hung in there. New tennis balls now, they're changing here at seven and nine. waving goodbye to a couple of spectators. Well, whatever happens in the match today, I don't think the New York public will ever again think of Patrick McEnroe as John McEnroe's younger brother. <laughs> And will this be the last time that we see Jimmy Connors on the stadium court at the U.S. Open? And only Jimmy knows that for sure.
sure there will be a bevy of wild card offers for Jimmy over the years, but Jimmy has so much pride in his game. He will only come to play when he really feels that he is representative of the best that he can do on the court. No, let's not get rid of Jimmy Connors too soon. I've seen him pull the Houdini act too many times. Well, as we saw earlier there in that graphic, he has come back from two sets to love down so many times. Scores from earlier today. Boris Becker, due to the second round. Stefan Edberg dropped a set. Brian Shelton, Michael Steak, the Wimbledon champion in straight sets. Jim Courier, French Open champion in four sets. And Stefan Edberg could have been down two sets to one. As Shelton had three set points in that third set to go up two sets to one. And Ivan Lendl could have been golfing tomorrow <laughs> afternoon if he didn't make that incredible comeback being down two match points. 40-15. Three loves. Patrick McEnroe cruising here in the third. Back at the U.S. Open, Patrick McEnroe has won 11 of the last 12 points. He leads two sets to none over Jerry Connors and up a break here in the third set. Love 15 as we continue to run through the scores. Sanchez Sanchez Vicario, Mary Jo Fernandez. Everyone except Natalie Toziat through to the second round in the women's draw. Due to contractual obligations, except for those of you out west, we will be leaving you in just a few moments. This match will continue on the CBS Late Night Wrap-Up Show. And for those of you out west, stay with us. We will take this match to conclusion. Live CBS Sports, U.S. Open Late Night. From the National Tennis Center in New York City, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. On the stadium court, James Scott Connors in his first round match of this U.S. Open, at age 38, about to be 39 next week, has battled against McEnroe, Patrick that is, and he is trailing three games to one, two sets down in the third set. And we join the action now. He was actually down three love in this third set, but has just held serve. And McEnroe serving at 3-1. Tim Ryan with Mary Carrillo, Andrea Joyce, here in New York tonight, and Connors has packed the place once more. A crowd that had to wait outside for a late ending afternoon schedule is inside here, cheering on the old man of tennis against the younger brother of John McEnroe. And you can see that even though Connors is very much down and out in this match, and it would be nearly impossible for him to come back. The fans still believe that this guy can come up with the goods. Down two sets, he's come back six times in his career. The last time, a couple of years ago, Wimbledon, when he was, when he was down, and was still able to, to do it, but I just don't see that happening tonight. Pat McEnroe has been very, very solid, and after taking the first two sets, he seems more than willing in this third to just keep the ball in play and let this, let this match die. Connors was very relaxed in the first set. McEnroe appeared a little tense, made a number of errors, but kept it together despite the crowd, of course, cheering for Connors. And they the screamed for him when he, when he walked out on that court. Yes, they did. The 25-year-old McEnroe won the first set 6-4. 
served for the second set at 5-4 and was broken by Connors, who forced his high break, only to lose it to the younger man. But here, as you can see, he's battling on every point as he has throughout his career, and he's now got double breaks. As he said, Mary, hard to imagine that he could come back from two sets down, but everybody remembers the effort he showed at the French Open against Michael Chang. He had to retire, ultimately, but he had to be literally dragged kicking and screaming off the red play of Roland Garros. That's why then Connors has broken the draw to three games to two on a muggy night on Stadium Court in New York City. That's how it stands. Welcome back to the U.S. Open. We are live from the Stadium Court with Jimmy Connors and Patrick McEnroe. Connors has just broken McEnroe to pull it to 3-2. McEnroe leading in the third set. He is up two sets. Connors serving at the far end of the court. 15 all in this game. Pat McEnroe, has, when they're even, when it, it's even, Pat McEnroe has been playing very well aggressively, but when he gets ahead, he's gotten a little bit tight in this match at various times. You can't do that against Jimmy Connors, but in this kind of atmosphere, you sure, you sure can understand why that would happen. Open court for McEnroe, and he connects down the line. 15-30. Jimmy Connors hasn't lost in the first round of the U.S. Open since 1972 when Tom Gorman took him out. And it's a nice play to pass Connors very cleanly. Pat McEnroe doesn't play an awful lot like his brother. He's not nearly as forward as John McEnroe. And he's, but he's approaching this match very, very uh, cleverly, I think, sliding a lot of low ones to Jimmy Connors and drawing after two sets, almost 20 errors off the Connors forehand side. And I think Patrick figured out that Jimmy Connors really liked his first serve pace and had more, more worries with uh, a spinning second serve. Some other scores of action earlier this afternoon, the top seeds, Becker and Edberg advancing, along with number three, the Wimbledon champion, Michael Steele. And after we saw two hours, 22 minutes, and, of course, that's an exacting toll on the 38-year-old body of Jimmy Connors. He'll be 39 on the 2nd of September next week. Another break point. Patrick McEnroe, 25 years of age, currently ranked number 35 in the world. What a jump that is for Pat McEnroe. Only three years ago, he was 494 in the world and just thought of as a doubles player. Wide. His brother John will play tomorrow in round two against Martin Lorondo of Canada. That's why Mac John McNair is not out here tonight. He's got to play at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Here's one break point saved. But Connor's still in trouble. Jim Courier a winner today in straight sets over Nicholas Kulti of Sweden and Lendl, a tremendous match from two sets down, beating the tough young Dutchman, Richard Kreitzer. It's an easy game. It's only the second time Pat McEnroe has played the U.S. Open, the 21st time for his opponent. Pat last year was a qualifier and went around. That was the first time he ever played in the Grand Slam. He really distinguished himself as you see the family McEnroe, John and Kay. Tatum McEnroe is also here tonight watching. Mark McEnroe, the middle brother of the three McEnroe sons, is here watching. Connors battles back with three consecutive points. Pat McEnroe, as I said, really distinguished himself in the, to get to the semifinals of the Australian Open, the first Grand Slam of the year before losing to Boris Becker, but his ranking jumped all the way from 114 to 55 on the computer, and now he's at a career-high 35. This hit by McEnroe, 
It's Saint the Tim. This is what has been happening. This is why Jimmy Connors still has uh, still has life in this match. As I said earlier, when they're even, it, it just seems that Connors can dictate the pace off the ground. But when Patrick has taken leads in this match, he's just tightened up a little bit. So they're at three all on the third set. McEnroe up two sets to love. Of course, Patrick hasn't played nearly as many matches in, uh, as Jimmy Connors has in this kind of, uh, of an atmosphere. Well, and credit to him to this point in the match that he's kept himself together to take the two-set lead. I figured if Connors was to win here that it would be because McEnroe couldn't deal with the moment. This is Jimmy Connors' own stage in all of tennis. The stadium court at the U.S. Open. Tim Ryan with Mary Carrillo here at the U.S. Open. We are normally bringing you our late night highlight show while you are seeing live action. Jimmy Connors, Patrick McEnroe in the third set on the stadium court. David Wheaton, number 11 seed, the fine young American Wimbledon semifinalist advancing along with number 14, Sanchez of Spain earlier today. And appear to be wide. But it was good. These two both have such magnificent flat two-handed backhands. It's been a pleasure to watch uh, backhands struck from both these players with, with so little evidence of topspin. Nice good serve down the middle from Patrick. As you can see, it must have taken a funny hop or something. Connors is staring at the court. He doesn't usually whip that. 15.30. And another, another beauty down the middle to draw to, to 30 all. McEnroe has had some success serving down the middle to Connors. Scores from the women's draw this afternoon. Arantxa Sanchez, Mary Jo Fernandez advancing, along with Martina Navratilova. She played this evening, winning easily over Patricia Carabini. Another terrific serve down the middle of the court. Fool Connors again. This is the first time these two have ever met, but they practice together an awful lot out in California. And in those practice sessions, this man, Patrick, tends to dominate. Probably part of the reason for such good composure. On this tough night, nearly 20,000 people are cheering for the old guy. Good wide. Back to Duke. This man, of course, the only U.S. Open winner to win on all three surfaces that the U.S. Open has been played on. The first of his victories was in 74 on grass, where he beat Rosewall, who at the time was the 39-year-old legend. Second time he won was against Borg on clay when it had switched over in 1976. He beat Borg again the first time the U.S. Open was played here on hard court. And then twice, in 82 and 83, he beat Yvonne Lendl. Great point for Connors. And when people ask Jimmy Connors why he's still out there playing, especially at a place like the U.S. Open, he says, how do you replace the feeling of pleasing 20,000 people? It's something I haven't figured out yet, because tennis is still the answer for me. Connors with a break, and a 4-3 lead in the third set, down two sets. Jimmy Connors... 15 love leading 4-3 in the third set, but down two sets to Patrick McEnroe live from the stadium court at the U.S. Open. A full house watching about to be 39-year-old Connors trying to stay in this tournament. Well, Connor shot out. You can see he's unhappy. Why don't you go take a nap? You just want to fly. And Connor's has been giving Dana LaConto in the chair a lot of heat all match long. Early on, Dana uh, 
made a uh, made an overrule, and Connors walked up to him and said, "Just be quiet. Don't say anything else for the rest of this match." And they've had a couple of run-ins since. And Connors again disagreed with that call, and he wanted an overrule that he did not get. Of course, he's the one who sort of put the gag order on Lakanto in the chair, and now he wants him. Now he wants him to speak up for him. An ace from Connors. That's a rare circumstance. He himself will acknowledge. Fans love it. 30-15. 30-15. He never did have a big serve, Connors. He says these days, unfortunately, that's what tennis seems to be all about. He says it's not even tennis anymore. Good shot from McEnroe. 30. 30 all. Boris Becker traded an awful lot of ground strokes with Martin Haite before finally uh, serving it up a little bit harder in the second and winning that one in straights. Michael Steech, the weak Wimbledon champion, also won in straights, as did Jim Courier. They, all three of them look pretty good today. Great point, McEnroe. We got Lendl. Yeah, right there. Boy, was he lucky. Uh, he really did need, I mean, he, he showed an awful lot of tenacity as well. But even he admitted afterwards that it, he needed some luck to win that one. And that was a night match. Novacek over Scott Davis tonight. Another forehand error from Connors, and that's really been tripping him up. Pat McEnroe is so smart to be delivering it over to that side and making him generate the pace. And he's really, uh, he's chummed a lot of those tonight. Again, when he's got to generate his own power, that's when he can goof it up. He'd much rather someone nail something at him and he could work off their own pay off their pace. For all now in the third set. Pat, Patrick McEnroe leading two sets to love. Yes! Live from the stadium court, if you just tuned in to get some scores and highlights, well, you've seen some scores, but you're looking at live tennis on the stadium court. Connors and Patrick McEnroe, round one. Connors in the near court. McEnroe returning that overhead. And again, but Connors knocks that one off and saves the break point. Love 15. Pardon me that we're in the next game here, having given you that score report. It's Love 15 at 4 all. Connors just climbed all over the net to make it a pretty easy volley put away. again for Connors. Continues to hit every ball like it's the last one he'll ever hit. Live from the National Tennis Center, Jimmy Connors reluctant to leave the stage. Tough to replace that with something else. Down the line into the open court. 
We mentioned earlier that Pat McEnroe lost to Boris Becker in the semis of the Australian, but then a couple of months later at the Lipton tournament on a hard court, he beat Boris Becker. And he's had some good wins since. In fact, just this year at Wimbledon, he beat the 12th seed Emilio Sanchez in the first round in his debut at Wimbledon. He can play. A rare foray to the net pays off with a sharp volley. 30 all. 30 all. Patrick found himself playing that other McEnroe in a final this year as well. Losing to brother John at Chicago. Imagine the emotions that went on in that match. Thirty forty. Again, this, and, and again, Tim, the, the pattern continues. When Patrick has a chance to, to really take control, he gets himself in trouble. The Connors can smell that. Back of the second serve here. Stays back. That's long. Connors with another break. And we'll be back at the U.S. Open after this message and a word from the local station. Connors at 5-4, love 15 here in the third set, trying to stay alive. He's down two sets to love. Patrick McEnroe, you're looking at there, 25 years of age, ranked number 35 in the world. First round action live from the stadium court at the USDA National Tennis Center. Tim Ryan with Mary Carrillo. Fifteen all. It's hard to imagine that should Connors win this set, that he could carry on from there and possibly win the match. His age, of course, has betrayed him in recent events, as it did at the French against Michael Chang. Despite a valiant effort, he was unable to continue. It's pretty true, Tim. As I said, he did it a couple of years ago at Wimbledon. He was down two sets to Michael Turnforge. But he was only 37. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty predictable results on the women's side all day long. Got into it. And you know who they're cheering for. 30 15. They've watched, uh, they've watched their kid play this man a lot, but it's been John McEnroe, not Direction Patrick. Direction to set point here, 40-15. And McEnroe's return was long. Two sets to one, Patrick McEnroe leading Jimmy Connors. We're into the fourth. Can the unimaginable be imagined here, Mary? I remember seeing this at the French Open this year. <laughs> As you mentioned, it was against Michael Chang, and finally, after the first point of the fifth set, on a big return winner from Connors, he had to walk up and, uh, and retire the match. He couldn't go on with a bad back. Oh. 
Good serve from McEnroe set up that winning point. Connors cannot get back up. Patrick McEnroe. First game, fourth set. Double fault. 40-15. It would appear Connor's best hope would be that McEnroe now does feel the tension and starts to make a lot of errors. And that'll get his attention. Great return by Connor. Patrick McEnroe wants to stay aggressive and prove that he's not going to wilt but again, every time he gives Connors pace, it, it only helps Jimmy's cause. Second serve. Patrick unhappy with the call on the first serve during our replay. There it is. Shot from McEnroe there. You have to wonder now, Mary, if uh, if this is getting to him. I don't know if that was a loose shot or a tight shot. <laughs> Probably more accurate report. And we've just passed midnight here in the east coast of the United States. Live from the stadium court at the National Tennis Center. Tim Ryan and Mary Carrillo in our studio watching what you were watching. Patrick McEnroe serving here in the fourth set, leading two sets to one over Jimmy Connors at the top of your screen. McEnroe shot right on the line. Patrick saw that he got himself a, a short ball and he just gobbled it up early. And that's what gave him that great short angle into the, into the, the mid-court, where so few players, it, it's very difficult to find that part of the court, but by taking it early, Patrick was able to. A break point, uh, pardon me, advantage McEnroe. <laughs> okay, McEnroe. He got it. And he holds. Patrick McEnroe. First game. And we'll be back. And John McEnroe have had some terrific battles here at the U.S. Open. McEnroe, John McEnroe holding a 3-1 lead. Connors beat him in the semifinals in 1978. And in 79, John beat Jimmy in the semis. That was his first U.S. Open win. He beat him in 80 and in a five-set thriller in 1984. The last chapter of Super Saturday. Jimmy went down in five sets. 15 all. As I said, this is the first time Patrick's ever played Jimmy, but John, his older brother, has a 1913 head to head record over Jimmy. <laughs> And it's 
rock and roll who falters in that rally. As you watch those long turns develop, you feel it's going to hurt Connors, and yet it's McEnroe who winds up losing the point. Well, Johnny Mac assessed this match right on the money the other day when he said there's going to be a lot of running involved, a lot of breaks to serve, and Jimmy Connors would be using up every second of the 25-second clock that's used in between points. When asked to pick a winner, John said, my brother. He said, I got to pick him. So he and Jimmy are really very good friends have become more so recently. In the last couple of years, yeah. Yeah, they've had their run-ins in, on the court in the past. Yeah. Wide. No, on the line. 30 all. We all. Fine return from Patrick McEnroe. That's his best shot, Pat McEnroe. Of course, it's Connor's best shot, too. Connor's trying to level here at one all. Fourth set, Connor's appearing to flag a little bit, but uh, he's been pumping it away here with adrenaline into this fourth set. Eight minutes after midnight here in New York. How far can he go? Thank you. What? Two hours and 53 minutes on court. Fifteen love. Fifteen love. Jimmy's been doing an awful lot of practicing out here in the last week, and in fact, he says something that's really pretty interesting. He says it's not enough in preparing for the U.S. Open to practice on a hard court. You've got to come out here and do it. Of course, he's got a very, very special affinity for this place. He walks out on this stadium, years drop away. You can hear the echo of, of 20,000 people even when he's practicing in an empty stadium. 15. Oh. Not sure everyone feels what Jimmy does on this court, but he really believes that. Fine He's pass from Connors as McEnroe came to the net. Quick reaction to get set for it. A patented two fisted backhand. 15 all. 15 30. 15. Connors makes a point like that and the crowd responds like that. It's another dose of adrenaline to keep him going. And Boris Becker, that's what Be Becker says that this is what it's like for him at Wimbledon, that he comes home and he feels it in his knees. Well, this is the place of all the tennis courts in the world where Connors feels it in his knees or everywhere.
You don't see a lot of 39-year-olds behave that way. <laughs> Two break points. And what's going through this young man's mind? An ace. Good response from Patrick McEnroe. Connors really likes Pat McEnroe. He says he is just a terrific kid. He said, but I don't want him to be terrific tonight. <laughs> and uh, the crowd, if not hostile, is decidedly, Jeez. decidedly behind the old man, Jimmy Connors. Good serve from McEnroe, deep to the corner, forehand side, back to Deuce. Connors doesn't serve. Uh, it's rare that he'll get one over in the three-digit mark. Patrick can flatten him out. Advantage, McEnroe. Patrick McEnroe from two break points has the end. Deuce. And a reminder again, Deuce. we're going to stay to the end of this one, and with Jimmy Connors out there, who knows how long we'll be here. Those folks are in their seats glued at 12.15 Eastern Time in New York. As far as we can tell, not too many have left, and who would? High drama on the stadium court. Another break point. Quattro. Quattro. Hard to imagine any athlete in any sport who has enjoyed his sport, the playing of it, as much as Jimmy Connors has. Deuce. And again, McEnroe responding with an ace back to Deuce. Tom, collected young man, at least outwardly, and showing it with that response. Advantage, McEnroe. Connor shot it was way out. He did not attempt to play it. As you said, Connors is going to play this. He was convinced this was wide. Now he's demanding that Dana LaConto get out of the chair. We're going to see some referee action. Get the referee, you're out of here. You're out. You're out. You stay out. You can't do your job right now. Get out. Now, Mary, the question is. Does Connors buy some time here? Or get, out here. get the referee out here. Get him out here, you keep him out here. Get him. 
or is this tirade using up energy? I'll give you another look. These are always hard to tell on replay, but you judge for yourself. I thought it was wide. I think Jimmy's right. Daniel Laconte, they're going to play on. The referee will come out on the court. I'm convinced of that, but it probably won't be until this game is over. As I said, Jimmy and the chair have been at it right from the start of this match. Now the fans are... They're really giving Dan Laconte and the chair the business. A soft-spoken man, a, a terrific chair umpire. But this match has gotten ugly. McEnroe, meanwhile, has had a nice long rest here on the baseline. by McEnroe and a missed overhead by Connors. Two games to one, McEnroe. Tim Ryan and Mary Carrillo in our studio. We're seeing the same pictures that you folks are at home. We'd actually love to be out there in the booth where we'd have the, the feel of the crowd, but we're in here with our highlight show set. Mary, uh, what, uh, what do you think the effect of this whole uh, brouhaha is going to be? You never, I, I don't know. I, I, this next game will say it all. Obviously, it was a tremendous and big point for Connors. Again, I think he got, I think he got a rotten call. But he's got the people behind him now, Tim. Even more. I mean, not that they had to be any more behind their guy. But they're on their feet now, and they're, uh, like I said, it's become much more difficult for Patrick McEnroe to try to hang tough. I mean, he's the unwitting victim of this whole thing. He didn't do anything wrong. One, two, in the fourth set. Two sets to one McEnroe. Another ace from Connors. So the juices flowed. By the way, the referee did not come out on that changeover. I was very surprised by that, and I'm, I'm not sure why. You're all, you are allowed to request the presence of a referee. After midnight, he may have left. <laughs> 30 love. Net. We're live from the stadium court. Forty Love, the kind of tennis theater that only James Scott Connors can produce. Well, Pat's, Patrick's brother is, uh, he's a got kind of stuff going. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen this before. Hold at love. Two all and a Mary early on. Patrick McEnroe getting the jump with a 6-4 victory in the first set. Bobbled a little late in the second, but won the tiebreaker. And I think most everybody thought, well, three sets and out for Jimmy Connors. And here he is. Three hours, six minutes later. Thank you. Slide. 15 love. And earlier today, here 
at the National Tennis Center, the top seeds on the men's side, Becker and Edberg both advancing. Wimbledon champion Michael Steak, certainly a strong contender here, along with number four, French Open champion Jimmy Courier. Good approach from Connors. And Ron Lendl having a battle back. Saving two match points against Krychik. That's good. But the top five seeds on the men's side were all able to advance today is, is something of an upset. Seeds advancing included Arantxa Sanchez Vicario, Mary Jo Fernandez, and Martina Navratilova in a night match. Thirty all. We're in the fourth set. Mike Connors. Other members of the family, Brother Mark. <laughs> Jimmy Connor says more tennis. More tennis. We'll be back at the U.S. Open after this word from your local station. Live from the stadium court, 1226 AM. Wednesday morning now. Connors, Patrick McEnroe. We're gonna stay here as long as these guys do. Connors at 15 love, leading 3-2 down, two sets to one. Young Patrick McEnroe, I'm sure did not bargain for this. On the other hand, had to believe it could happen. A long night. Thirty love. Connor is feeding on this, and I am certainly among those surprised by the stamina he's displaying to this point, Mary. Well, it surely helped him that this was a night match. In fact, the second night match of this evening. It's a lot cooler out there, and of course, the the night fans are a whole different breed from any other any other crowd in tennis anywhere in the world. Good return on a good serve. I'm starting to feel real sorry for Johnny Mac, though. Patrick's older brother is supposed to come out here at 11 o'clock this morning, Wednesday morning, and play his second round match. And I'm not convinced he's gone to bed. He's probably pacing around and scratching his head and going crazy. And Watch this without expending too much energy of his own. Forty fifteen. The great part about the, 
when John McEnroe talks about this server right here, he says, I, he's determined to play longer than Jimmy Connors. He doesn't want his career to end before Connors, but he's not convinced he's going to be able to, to come through with that. This guy does not want to leave the building. Connors with some zip on that last shot. Can you imagine how intimidating a, the atmosphere must be for a, a guy like Patrick McEnroe? I mean, whereas Jimmy Connors thinks this is the most intimate place in the world. Well, that was certainly the, the question at the very outset of the match, and it appeared that Patrick McEnroe was going to disprove that thinking. He was on top. Two sets to one. He still is. But he is being tested severely here now. Down 2-4 in the fourth. Wide. Connor's long. Fifteen off. John McEnroe scheduled at 11 o'clock this morning. As you point out, Mary, this has become a McEnroe doubleheader day here at the National Tennis Center. Patrick's still out there. It's not the first time today that someone's come back from two sets down. Yvonne Lendl needed to do that against another very talented young player, Richard Kwiatkowski. And Lendl now in the over 30 club. <laughs> Connor digs it out but couldn't get back to the next shot from McEnroe. 30 all. Both players working the towels and the clock. You know, fans don't always like to see somebody who's obviously not at the height of their powers anymore. They don't always like to watch them. I mean, they still like watching Jack Nicklaus. They don't mind that long goodbye, and they sure don't mind this one either. They seem to feel as every bit as good as when, when these athletes were at their feet. Well, what's the same for Connors is he hits every shot with the same determination that he did when he started playing the game. Great point. This is, I, that's so true, Tim. I mean, you, you close your eyes and, you know, this could be right out of the files of 1974. Saved by McEnroe. Solid overhead driving Connors out of the court and then giving himself a wide open court for the next one. your legs for Christ's sake, Duffin. Look at the ball for Christ's sake. Connors evidently thought an earlier shot was wide as he has just chastised the linesman.
Got a friendly little let cord there. And as I said, <laughs> right out of 74. Thank you. Yeah, there's some other aspects of his game tonight. His attitude and approach certainly harken back to those years. The feisty young Jimmy Connors. Mackinac missed it. Another break for Jimmy Connors. Hang on to your hats, folks. Tim Ryan with Mary Carrillo. We are watching a stunning performance, and I am among the stunned as Jimmy Connors serving for the fourth set against Patrick McEnroe. Thirty-nine years of age next Tuesday. Connor serving. Apparently thought the serve was wide. 15. We are here for the duration, folks. Any of you watching now, I'm sure will have no problem staying awake to the end of this one. First service. Next cord. Here we are. Five two Connors in the fourth set. Seemed like a late call from the Cyclops there. I think that's what Connors is complaining about. Not only the suchness of the call, but the lateness of it. Here's a second serve at 30 all. Wow. A set point for Connors. They are dancing in the aisles here at the National Tennis Center. A fifth set ahead. 
from two sets down. Homage being paid. The Olivier of the tennis world. This is his stage. What can young Patrick McEnroe be feeling, Mary, here as he is headed into a fifth set after a two-set lead? Crummy? <laughs> Really has tested this young man's medal now. I mentioned earlier that six times in his career, Jimmy Connors has come back after dropping the, the first two sets. The only time this guy's ever been able to pull it off at the U.S. Open was uh, back in uh, 1971 in the first round against Alex Olmedo. So maybe every 20 years he's capable of this kind of stuff. <laughs> this is 15 all. Alex Olmedo. Well, that is hard to imagine. <laughs> I think of my good friend out there in Los Angeles. I bet he's watching this right now. No doubt chuckling at your uh, reminiscence of that particular match. My first racket I won in a fishing contest when I was about 10 years old was an Alex Olmedo. a while ago. Not by a net cord. 1540. First signs to me at least, Mary, of a little discouragement on the face of McEnroe has been somewhat of a stone face, properly so, through the match, trying to maintain his calm demeanor. Feeding off the crowd and his own accomplishments. And Patrick, as you say, is carefully trying to straightjacket his emotions, but it's hard when you look over on the other side of the net and see so much going on in your opponent. Point save. Good serve from McEnroe. And the following winner, back to Duke. I think it was a nice play in this forehand. Again, he finds the middle of the court. Nice tricky shot that's unplayable. <laughs> Got a good grasp of all the angles on this court, Pat McEnroe. Good second serve from McEnroe, Not pulling Connors wide McEnroe. and then going to the open court. And any time he can add a few miles to Connors' sneakers, that certainly works in his favor as he pulled him from side to side. Advantage McEnroe.
ายนี่ Again, McEnroe trying to find that middle court. That one called just wide. Three hours, 30 minutes later, they are early in the fifth set on the stadium court. McEnroe complaining about the call. Connor's no doubt happy for the rest. Macro obviously wants to run Connors around, you know, drawing them in like that, hitting the the low ones to the Connors forehand, drawing more errors from there, which I think he could be doing more of in this final set. Bandage McEnroe. Patrick McEnroe hangs in there. One love, fifth set. We'll be back at the U.S. Open after this word from your local station. And as it frequently does, it includes yeah. the time. Down to one. Love one, fifth set against Patrick McEnroe, who led two sets to love. And most everyone, this commentator included, thought it would probably end in three in favor of the younger man. Here we are on the fifth. And Connors with an ace. Take that, skeptics. Good, 30-15. Those of you who may have joined us by accident at this hour, here's what else has happened here today. Becker and Edberg advancing. Top two seeds on the men's side of the draw, along with the number three, Wimbledon champion Michael Steak. And number four, American Jim Courier, the French Open champion, advanced. Yvonne Lendl, a match of the day until this one. From two sets down, over the young Dutchman, Krychek, Bruguera of Spain. The number nine seed moves ahead along with Novacek. Connors with another race. Is he going to savor this when he wakes up? <laughs> I really feel badly for, uh, for Pat McEnroe's uh, parents at this point. John Sr. and Kay McEnroe last year Watch his same kind of first round match from Patrick McEnroe. He won the first two sets against Jeff Tarango, lost the next two, but was able to salvage it and win in five. And that's what it's going to have to take here. Connors with only his fourth ace of the match. Three times as many from Patrick McEnroe. Brother John obviously made a wide de wise decision to stay home since he's playing first match today now at 11 a.m. But as you uh, suspect, Mary, he's probably uh, got the feet up and is watching this on television with uh, the rest of our tennis fans. David Wheaton winner today over the Australian Fromberg, Emilio Sanchez over the young American David Witt. You'll hear more of Mr. Witt in the future. Yes. Oh. 
Thirty all at one all here on the fifth set. Loves the return, so do his fans. Great point. I just can't imagine that there could be a harder place in the world to try to win a five-set match and a harder opponent than trying to, try to beat Jimmy Connors at one o'clock in the morning at the U.S. Open. Second serve upcoming. Fifth. Tim Ryan in our U.S. Open late night studio or early morning studio as the case is right now with stadium court action still going on between Connors and Patrick McEnroe. Do you believe this? Come on, <laughs> tell me the truth. Well, I, I really did think uh, after, after Patrick took the first two sets and he was winning in the third that it was, it was all over. I mean, that's just what Jimmy Connors is all about, though. That's for sure. And every fan hanging in there is getting more than his money's worth. It's not a cheap ticket here, folks, at the U.S. Open. But I think they'd be paying double right now, happily, to watch something special. 2-1, Connors leading Patrick McEnroe. 15 left. Up a break here on the fifth. McEnroe thought it was long. No cyclops yeah. called this one, Tim. There was no sound off of a off of the the cyclops machine. And Patrick obviously convinced this was well long. He yeah, sounds an awful lot like his brother when he talks, doesn't he? I mean, not, he doesn't spew the same kind of venom, but he, his voice sounds so much like John. That's long. And now a visibly disturbed and rattled Patrick McEnroe. Uh, you know, you, people talk about you know, the great effort of coming back from behind as Lendl has done, as Connors has done in this match, but it's awfully hard to come back from ahead. You know, having won two sets and then dropped them and now trying to salvage the fifth is, is also a very, very tough assignment. Three <laughs> games to one. Connors loyal fans. Again, Showing their feelings. Really something when you think that I mean, Pat McEnroe had a two-set lead and a break in the third, three love. And as has happened Black all Black match Black. long, I mean, there have been a lot of breaks to serve. Connors especially of late. Connors is putting the ball as hard as he did in the very first set. 
Well, and he was allegedly fresher. I'm not so, so sure anymore about that. I mean, his, his stamina, his show of conditioning here tonight is remarkable. That's why. Good serve from Patrick McEnroe. This is what Jimmy talks about. This is what he's talking about when he says, I don't want to wake up 20 years from now and say, what if? I don't want to have any regrets. Well, he sure could have gone away in that third set. Thirty fifteen. Not only that, but earlier in the match, in the second set, he seemed to be stretching his leg muscles as though he had pulled something. No sign of that, though. In the last three. <laughs> you can see Connors here wanting, he got the short ball and had to do a turnaround volley winner there. McEnroe thought he had a center line ace. Drop now. Great point, Connor. Chance for 4 1. We are live at 1 in the morning. Welcome to Wednesday from the National Tennis Center in New York. Tim Ryan with Mary Carrillo. Watching tennis theater at its best. Patrick McEnroe. Jimmy Connors. Headlining as usual. Break point saved. Back to Deuce for Patrick McEnroe. Whichever player wins will have gutted this thing out in fine style. Break point for Connors. Good serve from McEnroe. Had success there on the last one. Did he add court? <laughs> he's, he's ranked number 174 in the world right now, this man. He needed a wild card to get into this draw, and he says it's taken him 20 years to become a dangerous floater. Advantage McEnroe. In fact, when this match was made in the draw, I told our Andrea Joyce earlier in the week, well, I've played John, I've played his brother Patrick, I'm going to in the opening round. Ten years from now, I'll play John's five-year-old Kevin. Well played by McEnroe. And we'll be back at the U.S. Open after this word from your local station. National Tennis Center. Connors up 3-2 in the fifth. Connors in the foreground. 15 love. 
And in the last two sets, Patrick McEnroe has really let this guy dictate the baseline rallies entirely too much. In the beginning, it was Patrick who seemed to have the last word on these shots. He was more aggressive than he had a lot more winners. But now it's Connors who's stepping up and taking the necessary chances to win the points. Soon to be 39-year-old Jimmy Connors, 25-year-old Patrick McEnroe. Opening round action, now stretched over two days at the U.S. Open. Perfectly placed by Connors. <laughs> See, that's what separates Jimmy Connors from just about anybody. Any champion I've ever really seen, when he makes mistakes, it's not ever in an, it never seems to be in an, in an attempt to avoid making mistakes. It's because he's missed. He's gone for a shot and he's missed it. He doesn't play it safe. No, no. Thirty fifteen. He was long with that. That's what was so much fun for me watching another lefty, Rod Laver. He used to play the same way on the big moments. He said he had, he'd loosen up and go for the lines. And Jimmy Connors, in speaking of the U.S. Open, he says, you've got to be loose. That's what it's all about here. McEnroe now desperately looking for a break. Guy with gaze, perhaps looking for help from the tennis guy. Point McEnroe. Clap up. Took it to him, didn't he? Yes, he did. Hit a deep approach, came in behind it. It was a good shot right into Patrick's body. And that's what set him up so well. More of the same, as you indicated earlier. You know, going for it, pressing, making the aggressive play. On a big point. Deuce. He's been doing it for so long, it's just second nature. Miss hit. Vantage Connors. Vantage Connors.
Four games to two, Connors, fifth set. Live from the stadium court. Five points. thank you. Five points. Yes, some folks have left. It was a sellout when the match began. Love 15. Love 15. These long, matches were played yesterday. Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> Morris Becker won in straight. Stefan Edberg took four. But uh, turned back Brian Shelton. Michael Steak looked awfully good. And so did Jim Courier. Yvonne <laughs> Landel got it out of all kinds of trouble. When his opponent finally uh, was exhausted in the fifth set and lost it at love, Richard Kryacek. Why could he? A rare loose shot from Jimmy. Most of the women's scores were a lot easier. Rancho Sanchez, Mary Jo Fernandez, they had straight set wins. So did Martina Navratilova. The only one who had a three-setter of note today was Yana Novotna. She got by her first round match. Fine shot from Patrick McEnroe down the line. Again, a good serve, pulling Connors wide. 30-15. Another fine serve from McEnroe, 40-15. And Patrick McEnroe hangs on. Four games to three, Connors lead, fifth set. McEnroe really fighting himself now. He's trying to be aggressive. He knows that's what has to happen in the fifth set. But he tried to screen that volley over and it, and it found the net. Thank you. Fifteen all, Connors from two sets down, leading four games to three. Four hours of tennis has been played out here on the stadium court between these two young men, well, one older than the other. <laughs> I'll say, if Jimmy used to win this, you got to wonder how much he's going to have left. He's already, he's already uh, expended so much energy in just the first round of this U.S. Open. He would have tomorrow off. Dutchman Michael Shoppers awaits the winner of this match. He had to come through the qualifying. <laughs> Which means he's played four matches. We should point that out. The opponent awaiting the winner of this match. Doing the qualifying. Connor did a nice job of lunging for that forehand. As you can see, he was pushed way beyond the baseline. 15.30. Patrick's fitness level has really improved in the last year and a half. His good friend and coach Carlos Gothi has seen to that. Yeah. Pretty good serve from Connors at this late hour. Deep and with some snap. Connors, and Connor says the reason he's been around so long is that he's always paced himself and he's always stayed in shape.
He's in better shape than some of the fans who are having a hard time here at this hour. Better shape than a lot of the fans. McEnroe <laughs> got the line. Connors missed it. Two break point. Opportunity lost for McEnroe. Back to Deuce. He didn't move for that at all, did he, Tim? He nope. was really kind of hoping that, at this point, I think he's hoping that Connors just goes away. And he, he just, he wasn't nimble enough on this shot. It got, it came really deep, and, and as you can see, Patrick just sort of pulled up on the shot. Not aggressive enough. Straight up. Came off that shot. Good serve from McEnroe. Established the rhythm at that point. Pretty love. Oh, it's a great jump from Patrick McEnroe. He with two hands to snap that, snap that one out of the air and find a very difficult angle. This can be a very awkward shot to make. As you can see, you don't have a lot of power from that position, so you should go for the angle. Forty-fifteen. 
Another good serve, but it's long. Serve for the match when we return to the U.S. Open after this word from your local state. And you have love to stay with us throughout this. If you've joined us along the way, Patrick McEnroe had a two-set to love lead. Jimmy Connors, 39 next week, serving for the match. Play by McEnroe, forcing the issue. He hasn't been up to the net frequently. Love 30. The remainder of a sellout crowd. And I'm sure these diehards are hoping for a tie break. Neither player is. Turn. You heard Connor say yes. And this serve went right to Patrick McEnroe's strength, his backhand return of serve. And he knows he's got to do that. Cautious play. There's a lot of different ways to lose to Connors, but cautious play is punished the worst. Three break points for McEnroe. One of them lost. Maybe first round action in the Open, but it's the toweling championship of the tournament so far. No wonder after four plus hours. Muggy night in New York. Breaker save. And again, Connor's coming up with something big, something special. Thank you. Connor's struggling with the first serve in this game.
Does that say it all? You could hear Jimmy with his own mantra. Fight, fight, fight. He's back to do. Fastest serve of the whole night, 105 miles an hour. I miss the ball. Another match point. Again, a terrific first serve. Connor just drives it. And he's easily set up for his second match point. Great return from McEnroe. Jumping on the second serve, belting it to the baseline. Two. Patrick will not go softly into this good night or morning. Thinking for sure of his two set lead and not wanting to surrender here. thought it was long. Third match. 
that point. Again, hard to tell. McEnroe played it back as he had to. Connors knocked it off and once again exhorted himself. in America, you've just seen the high priest of the game thanking his flock for their support. Patrick McEnroe fought valiantly to the final shot. Clearly a disappointed loser surrendering a two-set lead to this legend of tennis approaching his 39th birthday. Play by the greatest entertainer in tennis. A fairly fresh looking Jimmy Connors is with our Andrea Joyce at courtside. All right, Jimmy, congratulations. A lot of folks are amazed that you were able to pull this out. How'd you do it? Well, he, he let me back in the match in the, in the third set. He had me three love and, and two sets to love, and then I, I got back into it playing my tennis, and then these people here get me going and uh, pull me through. Did you get the sense that the moment was just a little bit too big for him? Well, you know, he had his shot. I, I started hitting some better shots. He missed a few, uh, which gave me an opportunity to keep moving forward. And I just think overall, you know, it was a great match. Both of us played well when it counted. What about the next round? You had to play for four hours and 20 minutes tonight. Is there anything left for the next yeah, round? Yeah, I don't play tomorrow, so I'll be ready when the next match comes. The more things change, the more they stay the same year in and year out. U.S. Open time. Jimmy Connors, always the story, and we're always talking about you. Keep writing about it. All right, Thanks. enjoy the night. Let's go back up to you guys, Tim and Mary. Thanks, Andrea. Jimmy sense the timing isn't so good, though, uh, Mary, because he's going to miss the morning editions of the press. <laughs> it was really something, and you know what? I don't care. I don't care if he loses to Michael Shoppers. I don't care about Thursday. It's got nothing to do with it. I mean, tonight is its own match, and everybody that watched that match they don't care if he, if he doesn't get much further. I mean, this was all about tonight. Exactly right. A glorious event. We're glad you were here to share it with us. And for Andrew.